Well, here we are in week number four of our series we're calling All I Want for Christmas. And uh, man, we've gotten off to a wonderful start. And as I've thought about this series, it's occurred to me that the topics that we're covering are honestly uh, all, of the, all of the gifts, if you will, that, that God wants to give us when we enter into a relationship with Jesus. Uh, in week one, we talked about joy, and, and, uh, and man, God wants nothing more than to give you joy. In fact, Scripture says it's His will for you that you'd be joyful. Uh, or uh, in week two, we talked about a fresh start, and uh, you know, God is the God of fresh starts time and time again. But of course, that, that moment when we say yes to Jesus for the first time, of course, is uh, the single most significant fresh start in our lives. Last week, J.D. did a phenomenal job of uh, reminding us and encouraging us uh, to be with each other. Uh, all I want for Christmas is you. Uh, and, uh, uh, and he did a great job of unpacking that truth. And, and when we are in right relationship with God, uh, we should desire a right relationship with each other. And, and so that brings us up to this point. Uh, week number four of All I Want for Christmas, and uh, we've got a couple more weeks left for you, so stay tuned. I hope you'll come back each week and maybe even invite people. And Man, this would be a great time for us to just pause and for you to share uh, this feed. Just go ahead and click the share button right now and invite people to watch along with you because today's topic, today's topic I believe is one that everyone needs to hear. Uh, all of us need uh, today's topic, and I promise you, I will be brief. Uh, I promise you that uh, that this might be the shortest message I've ever preached. Um, so go ahead and click share right now. Share with your friends. Just invite them to join us here on the live feed. As you do that, I want to welcome you to my home. Uh, and uh, as you probably know, uh, I am quarantining right now and um, uh, just being safe. You know, I haven't felt well all week. And uh, and then. Uh, on, on Friday night, I discovered that I'd lost my sense of smell, uh, and that's a pretty strong indicator of COVID, and so we'll see. I'm, of course, praying for a negative result, but, uh, but I know that God holds whatever, whatever's in store for me and my family, and so, uh, and so I'm getting tested, and so we, uh, we're going to quarantine, uh, me and my family. And, uh, and today's message is appropriate, uh, even for that circumstance as well. And so my heart goes out to any of you. I know there are some in our church right now that are uh, going through the same thing, or maybe you've already gone through it previously. Uh, and so my heart goes out to you because I can understand full well uh, all of those feelings that come along with it. Well, now that you've shared the feed and invited people to join us today, uh, I want to introduce our topic to you today. And uh, I didn't bring it wrapped up. I hope that's okay. But today's topic is this one. All I want for Christmas is peace. Somebody write peace there in the comments. All I want for Christmas is peace. And you know, there's kind of these two kinds of peace, isn't there, that we, that we think about. Uh, there's, there's like world peace or, or peace with each other, and I think J.D. talked about that a bit last week. Uh, but that's not the peace that I'm talking about at all today. Today I'm talking about peace in our hearts. Peace in our hearts. And I want you to know right off the bat that, that God desires to give us peace. He promises peace over and over and over. He mentions this idea of peace or a lack of worry or a lack of fear. He mentions peace in one way or another dozens and dozens of times throughout Scripture. And in fact, he even says to us through this simple prayer that Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, uh, he, he prays this prayer, he writes it out, this prayer for the Thessalonian church. And as you know, these churches back in the day, they were faced with persecution. They were faced with limited resources. They were faced even in some instances with, with global pandemics. And, uh, and so he writes this prayer for, for the Thessalonian church. And I want to point your attention to it right now. It comes to us from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. It says to us there, to that church and to us, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the lord be with you all may now may the lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way 
this scripture points to the profound truth for you and for me that peace, God's peace, is meant to be available to us, get this, at all times and in every way. Oh, come on, somebody, that'll preach right there. In other words, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're faced with, even if you're quarantining at home because of COVID, you can find God's peace. And I don't know about you, but man, throughout this season, throughout these months of, of uncertainty and unrest and all of the other words that we can tie along, some of them words that I would, would not say, but maybe maybe you would, but, but words that we could tie to this, we have found ourselves time and time again faced with the opportunity to have peace or to lose our peace. Opportunities almost daily to either have peace or to lose our peace. And I don't know about you, but man, I find regularly opportunities to lose my peace. Whether I'm simply driving in my car, driving to work, or driving to pick my kids up from school, or going to the grocery store, there are often opportunities for me to lose my peace. Somebody cuts me off, or somebody turns abruptly without using a turn signal, all of those things can make us lose our peace. Or maybe it's dealing with children as they're working through their homework and they just don't quite want to focus in and get it done and, and, and get done what needs to be done and we can lose our peace. Other times we can get troubling news. We get a doctor's report or a loved one is sick or someone passes away and we find ourselves faced with that very real moment where we end up losing our peace. Have you been there? I imagine you have, all of us have, haven't we? Where we have opportunity to lose our peace and we step fully into losing our peace and we give way to anxiety and worry and fear and all of the other things, stress, all of the other things that come from a lack of of peace. Now, let me just flip the script for just a moment with you. Have you ever found yourself, I wouldn't call it with perfect peace, but man, it's pretty, pretty close. That place where you just know that, that, that there's peace in your heart. For me, I'll share with you, it comes regularly in a couple of different ways. The first way is on Friday nights. My family and I, with Consuelo and our four kids, we settle in on most Friday nights when they're available. We'll settle in and we'll do pizza and a movie. I know some of you do the same thing. And we try to hold true to that on every Friday night. We try not to schedule anything if we can help it. And so Friday night becomes our uh, night of family, pizza and movie. But I find myself sitting there on the couch with my kids surrounding me and my wife sitting next to me. And it's just this place of profound peace for me. It doesn't mean that there's not chaos going on out in the world. It doesn't mean that there's not something that, that I'm going to face the next day that, that will be troubling in some way or give me the opportunity to lose my peace. It's just that in that moment, I hope you've been there, in that moment, you just feel this sense of peace. Peace. It's kind of unexplainable. It, it's, it's this time in your life where the moment becomes more important than anything else. And you just find this peace at the core of who you are and everything seems right in the world, even if just for a moment. That's one time for me where I feel peace. It's when I'm surrounded by family and I'm doing something that is more important than anything else. Or another moment for me is when I find myself at church and we're in the midst of worship and I am just engaging with my God and I'm singing songs of praise and worship to him. I can find this overwhelming sense of peace. I remember the first time I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and, uh, and, and I, I, I was talking with somebody about it afterwards and they said, well, what was that like? And the only way I could describe it is I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace. And church, that's my desire for you. That's God's desire for you. And especially in this season, 
in the Christmas season, the holiday season that we find ourselves in in Advent, peace is something that should be readily found for you. And so I just want to explore with you, like I said, very quickly, just a few ideas about peace that hopefully will guide you the next time you have an opportunity to perhaps lose your peace. Here's the first one. You can write this down or take a screenshot. But the first one is this, is that the peace of God comes from peace with God. The peace of God comes from peace with God. You see, for you and me to fully find the peace of God, we have to be in a right place with God. And so if you are a person who you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that would be your first step. Because if you want the peace of God, which I can tell you is supremely worth it, it is valuable, it is exactly what you need in times of trouble, then your first step is to say yes to Jesus. You can, you can do that right now. You can just bow your heads and close your eyes right now and just pray a simple prayer. God, I need you. I admit that I'm a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live a new life. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, you took a step to being right with God. Being right with God. God, because listen, in John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus says these words. He says, peace, I leave with you. He's not going to take his peace from this world, but he's going he's to leave his peace with us. My peace, he says, I give you. I do not give as the world gives you. And don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. In other words, he is our source of peace, and our peace of God comes from peace with God. Now listen, though, it doesn't just stop and start there, does it? I mean, if you've been a Christian for very long, you already know that uh, this peace of God is not some magical thing that just happens the day you say yes to Jesus. We'll talk about some other ways that it happens for us, but in this context, the peace of God comes from peace with God. Listen to me, church. We have to be in a right place with God. You and me, if we want to find the peace of God, especially in the middle of chaos, especially in the middle of uncertainty, in the middle of, 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 of negative reports and, and, and all of the things that we deal with on a daily basis, we have to be regularly in a right place with God. In other words, we cannot go about our lives forgetting about God, but then when we need him, then turning to God. Of course, he loves us and he'll be there in that moment. But listen to me, if you want the ongoing peace of God, that means you have to have an ongoing right relationship with God. You cannot sin all week long and then expect God to show up on the weekend. You cannot just do what you want to do and then expect God to do what you want him to do. Oh, come on, somebody. If you want the peace of God, we have to be right with God. John 16, says it this way. I have told you these things. Again, these are the words of Jesus. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you're going to have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And can I just tell you that, that, that Jesus, Jesus is the place that we have peace. Spending time with him, learning about his character, having conversations and prayer with him, just having this right relationship with him will bring more and more peace into our lives. So that's the first one, the peace of God comes from peace with God. Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. Your focus determines your peace. Your focus determines your peace. In other words, where you focus your eyes will determine how much inner peace you have. What you find yourself looking at, what you find yourself looking up to, what you find yourself focused on will determine the level of peace that you have in your life. So often I find myself putting my trust in so many different things. I trust in myself and my own abilities and my own intellect and my own way of figuring things out and solving things all on my own. But when I put my trust or my focus in that, it can leave me worried. It can leave me anxious. It can make me lose my peace. Why? Because I'm not the savior of Tim. I'm not, the, I'm not the God of Tim. I am just Tim. And I'm flawed, and I, have, I, I make mistakes, and I have wrong ways of thinking about things. 
but my perfect Father in heaven, when I put my trust in Him, when I put my focus in Him, then I can have peace. But I also focus in other things, don't I? I focus in, on, on my money. I think somehow that, that the things that I have and the money that I accumulate will give me safety and security. But when my focus is on those things, guess what? I worry about things. When the bank account gets low, I begin to find myself stressed and anxious. When it looks like that maybe a, a source of income is, is going down, maybe, maybe it's an investment in my retirement account. And when the stock market begins to go down and tick down, I can find myself worried. Why? Because my focus is on that rather than on the source of my peace. Because where we focus determines our peace. Where do you put your trust? There's this great scripture, you probably know it, from the book of Philippians. Again, this is Paul writing to this church in Philippi, and he says these words. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. We talked about that uh, in week one in our joy message. He says, let your gentleness, this is chapter four, verses four through nine, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And then he says these profound words. He says, don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present all of your requests to God. And then what will happen? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, where we find ourselves focused will determine the level of our peace. And when we are focused on God, what we see here is that the peace of God which goes beyond anything that we can even understand, this peace of God will actually guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've seen lots of people, and I've even been tempted myself to put my trust and my focus in politics. Over the last few months, it's been, it's been, it's been spiking, hasn't it? And I've been tempted time and time again, and I know you have. I've seen other people post things and say things where it, it, it seems as though we're putting our trust and our hope and our focus into politics. But church, can I just tell you, that is not the source of our peace. That is not the source of our peace. That is not the source of our hope. No, our peace comes from God. The God of peace gives us peace. And so no matter who we elect to office, it isn't going to matter if we're focusing on them rather than the source. The peace of God which transcends all understanding, guess what it'll do? It'll protect your hearts and your minds. In other words, when we focus on God, we don't need to worry about anything else. Oh, isn't that a beautiful thought? How often I fail at that. But I, if I want to find true peace in my life, I need to allow God's peace to come in because then it will protect my heart and mind. My heart and mind won't be tempted to go after other things. I won't be focused on the things that won't bring me any, any peace into my life. But listen, here's what happens. If we continue reading, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, get this, think about such things. Think about such things. And then he closes, he says, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, then put that into practice. And the peace and the God of peace will be with you. In other words, what you think about matters. And I know for many of us, we obsess about things that are out of our control. We worry about things that, that really we shouldn't even be worried about. We find ourselves reacting, reacting to life as if somehow God's not in control any longer. But can I just tell you, the things that we should be thinking about are those things that are true. It's God's word. Those things that are noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable. I don't know about you, but man, I think my life would be richer and fuller and at a minimum more peaceful if I would focus on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, rather than what I feel or what I think or what I imagine. If I would focus my mind and my heart on those things, guess what? The God of peace will be with us. And so what we focus on determines our peace. Let me ask you this simple question before I move on to my, my final point here. What are you focused on? As you enter into this holiday season, this Christmas season, what are you focused on? You know, last week was Thanksgiving. And, uh, uh, well, I guess a week and a half ago was Thanksgiving. My family just the six of us spent Thanksgiving together. So the first time 
It's the first time that Consuelo and I, in 20 years of marriage and 23 years of being together, that we didn't spend it with other family members. It was different. But man, if I focus on what is lost, I can miss out on what was gained. Oh, come on, somebody. I can be so focused on what I'm losing that I miss out that this, is a, this was a wonderful opportunity for me to connect with my family on a deeper level. Same thing could be true for you about Christmas. Maybe you're already thinking about what you're losing this Christmas. Maybe you're not getting together with your family. And what's happening is you have an opportunity to lose your peace. But can I just tell you, you can find your peace. And it starts in what you focus on. So that's the first two things. The peace of God comes from peace with God. And your focus determines your peace. And then lastly, come on somebody, get ready to shout. The Holy Spirit is our pathway to peace. The Holy Spirit is our pathway to peace. You see, I shared that story of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and just sensing and feeling this unbelievable amount of peace, peace like I had never felt before. And that's because the fruit of the Spirit, as it says in Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit or one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. The Holy Spirit is our pathway to peace. And so for too many of us, we have not engaged in the things of the Holy Spirit. We have not searched scripture to see what it says about the Holy Spirit. We've not invited him into our lives. We've not engaged with him on a deep and profound level. But the Holy Spirit is our pathway to peace. Romans 8, 6 says it clearly. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Yeah, you guessed it. Life and peace. And so when we allow our minds and our lives to be governed by the Spirit rather than the flesh, that's, that the flesh is the things that I want to do, the, the things that I'm drawn to, the, the selfish parts of me that, that want to do things just for me and for my benefit. When we focus on those things, it brings death to our lives. In other words, it brings worry and anxiety and all of the things that, that, that just suck the life out of us. But when we find ourselves submitting to the Holy Spirit in greater and greater measure, what we will find is not only life, and life to the full, as Jesus would say, but life and peace. And so if you want more peace in your life, I would say to you, engage the Holy Spirit more. Engage with Him more. Invite Him fully into your life to baptize you, to fill you, to refill you. And then watch what happens in your life because the Holy Spirit, when he has full reign into our lives, it changes everything. It changes our perspective. It changes our attitude. It changes the way we give. It changes the way we interact. It changes our relationships. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the work inside of us. All of those fruits of the Spirit come from our relationship, the deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. So I invite you today to consider and then maybe take a step. Where are you at with the Holy Spirit? Is he someone that is fully active? And, 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 and are you someone who is submitted to him? Because he will guide your path. He will direct you. He will, he will uh, light up God's word. And man, I don't know about you, but I need more and more of all of that in my life. And I need what it says here. I need to have my mind governed by the spirit so that I can find more life and more peace. And so... Uh, as I close my time with you today, my big idea is simply this. All I want for Christmas is the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus who brings peace to my heart. All I want for Christmas is the Prince of Peace who brings peace to my heart. Isaiah 9, 6 famously says, For to us a child is born. We quote this scripture at Christmas time, don't we? To us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And that's Jesus, everybody. That's what I want more and more of in my life this Christmas. And listen, it takes each of us being in a right place with God, focusing our attention and our minds and our thinking on him, and allowing the Holy Spirit to come and do a full work inside of us, to lead us, to guide us, to correct us, to give us insight. The Holy Spirit does all those things so that we can find greater peace this Christmas season. All I want for Christmas is peace.
I just want some more peace. And as I enter into this personal time of quarantine, that's my prayer for myself, that I would fully leverage this time of being isolated and alone in a bedroom, that I would pursue God and his ways. I would find myself in the right position with him, that I would, that I would focus my mind and my thinking on who he is by studying his word and by just thinking about all of the good things that I've experienced in my relationship with him. And then opening myself up more and more to the peace that comes from my relationship with the Holy Spirit. The angels, they come to the shepherds, and we've read this scripture at least three of the four weeks, maybe all four weeks. And they say many famous words, but in chapter 2 of Luke and verse 14, they say these words that I remember saying as a kid in the Christmas play at church. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Or the translation we're looking at there, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. You see, when, when, when you accept Jesus into your heart, when you admit God as father of your life and you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and through you, you find that he has this peace for you that does surpass all understanding. And it guides you and it protects your heart and it protects your mind. And so I just want to say a couple more things about peace before I let you go. Listen, I, I don't uh, want to convey to you that this peace that I'm talking about is something that is just always and continually there. I wouldn't be doing this topic justice if I tried to convince you of that. I have found time and time again in my life that the peace of God is sometimes absent, but that's on me <laughs> because even though the peace of God may not always be present, it's always available. I want you to hear those words again. Even though the peace of God is not always present, it is always available. And so for you and for me, as we enter into this Christmas season especially, and we begin to imagine what we want life to be like, and we say, yeah, I want more peace. Can I just share with you today, it's available. It's available to you. And then secondly, listen, there are going to be times that come up in the next week or in the next few days, next few months, where you're going, to, you're going to have the opportunity to either have peace or lose your peace. Can I, just, can I just challenge you? Start your day with God's peace. Wake up in the morning and decide, I'm going to think on these things. Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to, I'm going to think on these things. I'm going, to, I'm going to start my day with God's peace. I'm going to be in his word. I'm going to spend some time in prayer. I'm going to intentionally choose peace this day. And then I'm going to choose peace the next day. And then I'm going to choose peace the next day. Because even though it's present, it's always available. And so if you start your day by choosing peace, I think it'll be easier to find peace in your day. Also, I would challenge you that as you are faced with opportunities to lose your peace, use those as a reminder to pray. Use those as a reminder to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Because, listen, everything that you face in life has an expiration date. Every, every trouble, every trial, every chaotic moment, it has an expiration date one way or another. And so our opportunity is often not to solve the problem, but to seek God in the problem. And so I want to challenge you that when you are faced with big or small opportunities to lose your peace, use it as a time to pray and to simply say to God, okay, God, I know you're trying to teach me something. I know you're trying to help me have more peace in my life. Right now I'm getting ready to lose it. So God, I need you to show up. I need you to show me what to do. I need you to help me to find peace. And as you do that more and more, as you make that a regular habit in your life, I would submit to you, that you will find a more peaceful life. And so, I don't know about you, but all I want for Christmas is peace this year. I want the Prince of Peace that brings peace to my heart. And so, if you're with me on that, before we sing one final worship song together this morning, you bow your heads and close your eyes and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the way that your word just instructs us and challenges us. And Lord, how we can look to your word for practical truth in the midst of even what we're going through today. And so, Lord, I pray for everyone that's watching right now, Lord, that your peace, that peace that goes beyond what we can understand, that peace that protects our hearts and our minds, that, God, that your peace would come to every heart and mind that is watching right now.
And Lord, that as we, as we seek you, Lord, I pray that we would find you in the midst of our circumstances. That, Lord, as we uh, have opportunities to either find peace or lose peace, God, I pray that we would find it each and every time. And Holy Spirit, we open ourselves up to you. Do what only you can do. Baptize us, fill us, refill us. Speak your calming words to us. Give us perspective. And God, help us to Help us to focus our thinking on those things that are true and pure and lovely, those things that are admirable. Lord, I pray that we would focus our minds on those things so that we might experience your peace. Lord, protect us from getting caught up in the minutia of the argument or of the moment or of the headache or of the frustration. Help us to focus our thoughts on you and understand that, God, you are active in every moment of every day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great rest of your Sunday.